All right, let's discuss the solution to the interesting problem where we have a spring. At one end is a mass lowercase m and at the other end is a mass capital M. And we want to know what the resonance frequency of that system is. In the case of resonances, both objects have the same frequency. And they are either in phase with each other or out of phase with each other. And what that means is the following. Surely they come to a halt both at the same time. And surely they go through equilibrium, their own equilibrium, at the same moment in time. If, however, they were in phase, then if they go through equilibrium, they would go move in the same direction through equilibrium. If they are out of phase, they would go through equilibrium in the opposite direction. That's the difference. Let's take a look at the picture. In our case, the, the motion that both would be in phase can immediately be excluded. Because simply imagine that they would do this and come to a halt at the same moment in time. That's a requirement. Now, there would be an acceleration on both of them in this direction. So that means the center of mass, which has moved when I do this, the center of mass has moved also to the right, the center of mass would now experience an acceleration also in this direction. And that is not possible because the center of mass can only move, only be accelerated, sorry, can only be accelerated if there is an external force. And there is no external force. The table is frictionless. So this motion cannot happen. However, what can happen is that they have the same frequency, but that they oscillate like this. In that case, an obvious solution is that the center of mass doesn't move at all, just sits still. Or what you could do, you could give the center of mass a constant velocity. But that cannot change that, that velocity. Either one is fine. The easiest way, <laughs> I would think, is just to assume that the center of mass is not moving. So you could take a nail and you could nail the spring to the table at the center of mass. So here is the center of mass between little m and capital M and we put a nail in here and the center of mass is fixed on the table. So let us call the length of this spring L2 and the spring constant K2. And let's call the length of this spring then L1 and the spring constant K1. Clearly, if there's a nail in here, this spring acts all by itself. It wouldn't even know that there is a spring here. And this spring acts all by itself. No knowledge that there is a spring here. Now, the center of mass, I hope you will remember that, would be that capital M times L2 is little m times L1. Capital M times L2, little m times L1. So the shorter the spring is, the higher the spring constant. That's quite obvious, I hope. So it follows immediately that K1 is the total length L1 plus L2 divided by L1 times K, and K2 is the total length from here to here divided by L2 times K. Remember, in this situation that I had drawn, the spring was completely relaxed. So L is its relaxed length. So, let's take an example that capital M is three times little m. Then you can immediately appreciate the fact that L1 is three times L2, because ML2 is ML1. 
So L1 is then three quarter of the total length, and L2 is only one quarter of the total length. But if L2 is only one quarter of the total length, its spring constant must be four times this value, it's 4k. And the spring constant of k1 would then be 4 third k. So now we can treat the system as one spring here with spring constant k2 and one spring here with spring constant k1. And if we did it right, then the frequency of this system here should be exactly the same as the frequency of this system here. Because only then will the center of mass stay in one place. Because remember, a resonance frequency requires that they have both the same frequency, and in our case, that they are 180 degrees out of phase. So let's now make the next step. Okay. So if we go to the spring K1 on the left, then the resonance frequency squared is of course K1 over little m, and the resonance frequency of the spring on the right, that's smaller spring, if it is smaller, is K2 over capital M. Well, it follows then immediately that the square of the resonance is k over lowercase m times 1 plus lowercase m over capital M. And the resonance frequency squared of spring number 2 is obviously the same. It better be the same. It's kt over capital M. And that gives you the same answer. This answer is equivalent to this answer. If you need some time for that, check it. Let's take the case that M is 3M. Capital M is 3 lowercase m. That would mean that omega square would be 4 third k over M. Look here. This would be 1 third. 1 plus 1 third is 4 third. So that is 4 third k over m. Look here. Capital M over m is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. Capital M is 3m. 4k over 3m would be fine. 4k over capital M is also fine. So it's clear that both frequencies are the same and that of course is only logical because that we only calculate resonance frequencies. So the answer then that I would expect from you if we kill the square that the resonance frequency is the square root you can take this one or you can take this one I choose this one whatever and that will give you then this result. So now, I want to go one step further and I want to discuss with you what are actually the positions of those two objects as a function of time. I didn't ask you that, but I want to add that because it gives you some important insight. So let me go back to the left and let me remove this. So you see the spring there, again, mass center of mass, spring constant K2, length L2, spring constant K1, length L1. Suppose the amplitude of the motion of capital M is A, capital A. So then we could write down that X2, which has zero here, would be a times cosine omega t, and the omega we just already calculated. It would mean then that t is zero, 
that the object is here and is about to return. Now, what is essential, of course, that x1 amplitude cannot be anything at random because they must stop at the same moment in time and they must go through equilibrium at the same moment in time. And so it follows immediately then that x1 is capital M over little m times larger than capital A and of course a minus sign because I call this minus and I call this plus. So in the case that capital M over lowercase m is 3, it would mean that the amplitude of this motion would be 3 times larger than the amplitude of this motion. And think about it this way, if this one comes to a halt, then there is a spring force on this object, which is A times K2. If this one comes to a halt, it must be its own amplitude times k1. Those two forces must be the same. If they were not the same, the center of mass would become accelerated. So now you see why it's obvious that if you give x2 a given amplitude, that the amplitude of x1 follows immediately. And if m over m were 3, then this amplitude would therefore be 3 times higher than this amplitude. So that the spring force on this object in this direction when it comes to a halt is exactly the same as the spring force in this direction when this one comes to a halt. So they both experience force in this direction, force in this direction. The two forces are the same and the center of mass is therefore not accelerated. I mentioned earlier there is no problem for the center of mass to move with constant velocity. That's perfectly okay. Solution would be identical, of course. You don't ask me to solve it for that case because if you move the center of mass with velocity v, then I would just jump into the reference frame of that moving object and I would stand still then relative to the center of mass. So I would move to a reference frame in which the center of mass stands still. I can always do that, provided that the velocity of the center of mass is a given, is a constant, is not changing. All right, so I think we've hit this hard enough. It's an interesting problem. It's not that difficult. And it gives some very ins nice insight into the whole concept of resonances. In 803, I discuss, I discuss many coupled oscillators. For instance, two pendulums, one below the other. So one pendulum is coupled to the other. In a case like that, you always have two resonance frequencies. But that's not the case here. It's really not, in that sense, a coupled oscillator like two pendulums. So here we only get one, namely that the two are out of phase and there is no solution that they are in phase. So that's the reason why I didn't want to call it a coupled oscillator because that might confuse you. But yeah, in a way, capital M and little m are coupled, of course, through the spring. All right, I think we've hit it hard enough. Have a nice day, take care, and let's try to be friends.